Welcome to the video tutorial series on modding simple planes. This is part three of the custom parts tutorial. In this video, we will be taking the color trail part that we created in the previous tutorial and enhancing it. Specifically, we will be setting it up such that it has a couple of properties that are customizable in the designer, and we will be setting it up such that you can turn it on and off based on an activation group and the current throttle value. Let's start off by jumping over to the part modifier script. What I want to do here is create a couple properties that we can modify in the designer. One of those properties is color. And the other property is the lifetime. Okay, now we have a couple properties, but we can't actually modify these in the Simple Planes designer yet. To do this, we're going to need a couple attributes. So if I select the designer property toggle button, this will create a button that will toggle between a few values. Uh, we're going to keep it simple for now and just go with, let's say, red and green. For the lifetime, what I want is a slider. If I go to designer property slider, we can set, let's see, the minimum value, let's say 1. The maximum value, let's say 20, and the number of steps. So let's do 20. In this particular case, we want to provide a special label on this property. We're going to say the label is lifetime in seconds. Okay, that should be all we need to actually get these properties to show up in the designer. They're not going to be wired up to anything yet, but we'll work on that next. Let's jump back to Unity for a second. For the trail renderer object, I don't know of any easy way to change the color via scripts. So what we're going to do is create two trail renderer objects, one red, one green, and then we're going to load the appropriate one based on the color the user selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my original trail renderer object, and I'm going to rename these. This is red, and this one will be green. Now I need to go over to the inspector and actually change all these color values. Now before I forget, I'm going to come over here to our trail emitter part. I'm going to go to the trail emitter modifier and I'm going to set our default color value to red and the lifetime let's say 10 seconds. We'll jump into the scripts in a moment and wire everything up, but first I want to set up my input controller so that this trail emitter can be controlled via the throttle and an activation group. So what I'm going to need is another part modifier, but I'm going to use one that already exists in Simple Planes. I'm going to select the input controller modifier and say add. For the default activation group, we're going to say one. The default input, we're going to tie it to the throttle. The max value one and the min value of zero, and we're just going to say zero on deactivate is true. Okay, I think that's all we need to do with Unity for now. Let's jump back to Visual Studio, go over to my behavior script, and get this all tied together. Now that we can actually enable and disable this trail emitter, we're not going to want to create it in our start method. What I'm going to do is create an update method. And we're going to move this to that update method. We're going to need access to some of that part modifier configuration information we had set up. We can get this by hitting the part modifier property. But this is going to give us the base class. We need to cast it to our specific class in order to access those properties we set up. This is going to be the trail emitter. Okay. Now, if you'll remember, we renamed our trail render object. It's now trail render red and trail render object green. So we're going to load the appropriate one based on the color that the player configured. OK, now I want to set up the lifetime on the trail renderer. So I'm going to need to get the trail renderer component. And I actually want to store this in a class level variable.
now that we have the trail renderer, let's set the lifetime. Okay, what we have right now doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We'd be creating this trail renderer object every single frame. What we want to do instead is we want to detect whenever we should be creating it, whenever it becomes enabled, and then we'll create it. Otherwise, if we disable the part, we want to unparent the object so the trail stays in, stays in place and then let it auto-destruct when its time expires. So let's get started here. First thing I want to do is take a look at the input controller. This input controller property is only going to be populated if the part modifier has an input controller modifier on it, uh, which we added earlier. So we're going to have one. So the input controller active will tell us whether or not that activation group is active or inactive. The value will be tied to what we tied it to, which is the throttle. So essentially, whenever the activation group is active and the throttle is throttled up at all, this value is going to be greater than zero. If the activation group is deactivated, or if the throttle value is all the way at zero, then this value is going to be zero. So we know if the part is enabled if this value is greater than zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the part is enabled, and if we don't currently have a trail renderer, that means we need to create one. Otherwise, if the part is not enabled and we do have a trail renderer, that means the part has been turned off and we need to disable the trail renderer. The best way to do this is unparent the object and then let it auto destruct whenever its time expires. So, what we're going to do is say this.trailrender.auto destruct is true. We're going to hit the transform. We're going to unparent it. And then we're going to set trail renderer to null. Okay, let's jump back to Unity and make sure everything's saved, and then we'll save our mod. So if I go to the mod builder here, we can see my old object is still saved. I don't want that object anymore. In fact, it doesn't even exist. So we're going to delete this. We're going to select our red and our green and our trail emitter. We're going to save those. We're going to save the mod. Okay, let's jump into Simple Planes and see if it worked. Select our trail emitter here. We go to Part Properties, and there it is. You see, we've got a little graphical error here, but more importantly, we got our trail emitter and we got it showing up with our properties. So let's say we'll leave this one at red, make it a lifetime of 20, and go over to the other one. Let's say we want this one to be green, and we'll give it a lifetime of, let's say, 2. Let's play. All right, we can take off. We see no trails. Now if I go to the activation groups, fire off act activation group one, and there we have our trails. If we look at them, we can see the green is much shorter than the red. If I kill the throttle, the trails disappear. Throttle back up, we got the trails again. If I kill the activation group, the trails disappear. Turn it back on, and there's our trails. So it looks like everything's working. That's about all there is to that. Thanks for watching.